Can we all finally admit that decorating a home is hard? It's really, really difficult, but honestly, I don't think it has to be. So in today's video, I'm sharing nine home decorating secrets that are guaranteed to make designing your home that much easier. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kiva and I teach people how to achieve the luxe look for less. If you like the sound of that, please be sure to subscribe because I have new videos for you every Monday and Thursday, but let's get into these home decorating hacks. The first design hack that is going to change the game for you is to use a peel and stick wallpaper as a backing for literally any project. So you're saying, what, why would I do that? It's expensive. So peel and stick wallpaper, it is an investment, right? It's not cheap. Sure, they have little squares of the Dollar Tree or the dollar and 25 cent tree. See, it just doesn't have the same ring to it as it used to, but you can get peel and stick wallpaper there, but it's really costly, you know, with the amount that you might need. But peel and stick wallpaper is a great backing because it comes right off the wall so if you want to put decorative molding up on your wall with some liquid nails or some type of glue if you put that on top of peel and stick wallpaper when you get tired of it you can just simply peel off the peel and stick wallpaper and all of that will come down so if you decide you don't like it, you just want to test out the waters, or you know for a fact you're going to change your mind because you are too much like Kiva from DIY with KB, um, you're just thinking ahead. You're just thinking ahead, which is totally okay. But this backing can really change the game because instead of messing up your walls or your cabinets or whatever it is, you're using... Um, pretty much a backdrop like you just have a little bit of a safety net to be creative and see if your idea is actually going to pan out the way it's going to because the fact of the matter is unless you are a designer an architect uh something like that you don't you don't use these fancy softwares right and even i have access to the fancy softwares and i still would rather mess up my wall to see if it's going to look good right because i just i don't think looking at the computer is the same thing i don't know maybe i'm old-fashioned maybe i'm old-fashioned at the age of 25 but that's okay you can use this for backing for anything the same thing goes it's not just for you know putting decorative molding on your wall or painting your wall it's also about painting a piece of furniture so maybe you get something from Ikea or you know home goods or whatever like that and you want to upcycle it but you're not sure you want to commit to that change throw some peel and stick wallpaper on there and paint that see if it actually looks the way you want it to look before committing and ruining a perfectly good piece of furniture it's such a simple hack that yeah of course it costs you some money but in the long term it will save you money and it will save you a lot of time and grief especially if you mess up something now this one is very similar to the last one but it is a point that needs to be made because because I feel like people think they're too good for this, but you're not. You're really missing out on some really great solutions. So the next life-changing home hack is to start using um, adhesive hooks and 3M claws. So this video is not sponsored in any ways. I'm just trying to give you the tea. I'm trying to give you the information so that you can save your walls and your money. So back in the day, a long, long, long time ago, five years ago, the hooks were not as good. The hooks were not as good. They, they could hold, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds, um, you know, but things would come falling off your wall the second you slap that adhesive strip on the wall. Not anymore. These strips and hooks, they can hold an incredible, an incredible amount of weight. And that means that you can hang up your photos, your mirrors, your this, your that, using adhesive hooks or hooks that make really, really, really small holes in the wall. Because I know, I know this has happened to you. Don't try to lie to me. You've, you didn't measure something perfectly because you're like, oh, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to eyeball it, right? You start putting, you know, a hole in the wall, you move it over a little bit and then a little bit and then a little bit. And then suddenly there's like 50 holes in your wall just to hang up one painting. I know you've been there. It's okay. This is a safe place. Kiva's not going to judge you, right? But we've all been there. But when you use 3M hooks, the wall is so minimal, the hole is so minimal that you can move it around if you need to, but you really don't need to, right? And you get to hang something heavy without all of that grief, right? You don't have to worry about patching the wall or painting over it. Not only if you move, if you're a renter, but if you own the space, if you decide to do something different, right? Because we all have commitment issues, like I've said, right? So you should be able to move things in your own home without worrying about having to hire a handyman every single time to patch your drywall. Same thing goes with command hooks or strips or just general adhesive strips. They can hold artwork, they can hold painting, they can hold LED lights. All the things that we used to have to nail into walls, we don't have to do that anymore. So let's stop putting holes in our walls when we don't need to because it's just cumbersome to cover up. I don't really care about your landlord, you know, like he has enough money, you know, like he shouldn't take your security deposit, but I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about your own experience in your home. You shouldn't have to look at those hideous holes and you don't have to anymore because there are so many temporary solutions that honestly are just better. 
The next life-changing design hack is to buy furniture that can work in multiple parts of your home. So I don't just mean stylistically. Of course, every piece of furniture in your house should be able to work in another room in your house because we create cohesive homes. And if your home isn't cohesive, I have tons of videos on just this. So be sure to subscribe and check out the video up above to learn more about how to craft a cohesive home, right? Because we love giving that interior design information here on DIY with KB. But we're not just talking about stylistically, right? Sure, our homes are cohesive in terms of style, but they also need to have furniture that can fit in different parts of your home. Because again, we've got commitment issues. You need to start buying furniture that will fit in multiple parts of your home because if your design style changes, right, or your interest chains or your mobility changes or your lifestyle changes, you need to be able to move that furniture to somewhere else in your home because we are in this kind of part in the world where we have fast fashion but fast furniture, right? We have fast furniture and, you know, it has its qualms but a lot of us do buy into it. And the one thing about fast furniture that we don't talk about is what do we do with the furniture when we've moved on from it, right? You're not just going to put it outside. I don't want to put it in a landfill. So you've got to sell it, you've got to donate it, or you've got to find somewhere else to put it in your home. And since a lot of us don't have time to go on Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that, we are just leaving it in a room in our home, piling up. There's junk piling up in the room. We all have that room of doom, right? We all have a room of doom. And we don't want to do that. So start buying furniture that fits in multiple parts of your home. Let me give you an example. So recently I had two bookcases in my living room on either side of the sofa. whoop de doo Kiva is going to change her living room again. I have commitment issues again, right? I'm changing my living room again. We're going through some life changes and I want our space to reflect that, right? So the bookcases have got to go. And I fully knew that when I got the bookcases that they were going to move at some point in time because I, I've met myself. You've met me. You'd be like, Kiva, never get something that doesn't fit anywhere else, right? So these bookcases, they don't really either only fit on either side of the sofa, but they also fit in the dining room. They also fit in the entryway. They also fit on either side of the alcoves in both our bedroom and our guest room. Please start buying furniture that fits both spatially and stylistically in other parts of your home. You're going to thank yourself for it because it's going to be a lot less wasteful. You're not going to be getting rid of storage and you're not going to be wasting your money because again, for me, money is the most important thing because we're all about the lux look for less here and it's not the lux look for less if you're just bringing furniture and furniture and furniture in and you're not profiting off of it. Make sure you are at least still using it and repurposing it. Now this next home hack is definitely my favorite and it's one that I tell every single design client I have. So if you have a coffee table, right, which most of you should, you should have a coffee table. If you have a coffee table, I want you to start putting decor on a tray on that coffee table. Now you may be asking, Kiva, why do I need to do that? Well, there are two reasons. There is one practical reason and there's one stylistic reason. Let's start with the stylistic reason. Well, this is a game changer because it breaks up the surface, right? So coffee table styling can look really bland, especially when everything is low profile. It's okay to have things that are low profile because I know you put a vase on there with a lot of plants and again it's like trekking through the Amazon to see someone on the other side. It's very unnecessary. I do not want to go on a hike right so I shouldn't have to go on a hike in my own living room. We want to keep things low profile but we want it to be a little bit more interesting. A tray is going to break it up so if your if your coffee table is a gray wooden table putting on that hammered pewter tray on top with the books on top of that instead of just on the gray tabletop it's really going to break it up, add some new texture, add some new color, add some visual interest without us having to play with the height or really mix and match a lot. The functional reason why, the practical reason why I want you to start using a tray is because it makes it easy to actually use your coffee table. Please raise your hand if sometimes you like to eat in front of the television. I'm not ashamed, that's what we like to do. After a long day of work, sometimes you just wanna sit down and watch an episode of Friends while eating your dinner, right? That's okay, I'm not gonna judge you for that. And a lot of us do it on our coffee tables. It's not like you, you get your dining table and you drag it over, right, just to eat in your living room. If you do that, please stop. That, that seems like a lot of effort. So you might eat at your coffee table. Well, if you have it decorated like you see on Pinterest and Instagram like people do all the time, it's, it sounds like a hassle every single day to move all that decor. One, you then have to have a storage place for all of that decor. And two, it's a lot of effort. It's just a lot of effort. So you probably end up eating on top of your decor. You spill a little sauce on it and it's ruined, right? So you've cost yourself time, money, and effort, right? And those are the three things we never want to waste here. So if you put things on a tray, it's really easy to move them and they have a designated place. So you have your books, you have your vase, you have your whatever on that tray. Okay, it broke up the styling on that coffee table. I can pick it up really easily, sit it on the floor without it rolling about, right? Eat 
on the coffee table and then pick it back up. I don't have to worry about reorienting that vase in the perfect direction so the right, you know, imperfection is showing and it gives you like that look. I, you know, it go there's a lot of thought that goes into the styling, right? I spend hours upon hours moving the exact same vase, you know, in different directions trying to get the vibe. So, to prevent yourself from having to do that, put everything on a tray. It makes things a lot, a lot, a lot easier. And it makes your space look a lot more interesting. So that's a home hack that is a game changer. Plus it's going to, it's really gonna revolutionize your TV watching experience. Do you have adequate seating in your home? Let me know down in the comments if you do, because a lot of the times my clients say to me, I don't have enough space. How can I work in another chair, another this, another that? And a lot of the time there is no practical way to do that, that can stay around all of the time, right? Right? because we want to have multiple entryways. We want to have adequate walkways so that the space doesn't feel cramped. So how do we fix that? Well, the home hack I want you to start doing is to incorporate ottomans into your designs. So ottomans are very, very underrated. No, am I, I'm not saying to sit on an ottoman all day, every day in your home. You don't need to do that. Get the recliner if you want to, get the swivel chair. But ottomans are really great to have if family comes over very often and you entertain, but you don't have space to have seats at all the time or you don't want a big L sectional. Hide that seating other places. So there are two different ways that you can hide ottomans that I want you to start considering. The first way is to hide them under console tables. In the recent years, console tables have become really, really popular under televisions and behind uh, your sofa. Of course, they're just called sofa back tables or sofa tables, but they have become really popular in that regard. And a lot of time with sofa tables, there is a lot of space underneath, right? It's just empty space because you just have a really basic console with decor on top and just empty space underneath. Well, instead of leaving that space empty, start putting ottomans under there. Add an ottoman that is a different color or texture than your sofa, right? With a very open base so that light can still pass underneath that console, but you have additional seating that when people do come around, you can swing around and use. But when people aren't around, it is a really great decorative accent that again, adds some visual interest. Now, if you don't have a sofa console, the same thing goes under your television. A lot of people have media consoles with absolutely nothing in them, right? Because everything's online now. Did you know you can play like the PlayStation 5 without actually having like a PlayStation 5? I don't know, I really don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's at least what my what my brother-in-law says. I don't really understand it, but you can you can have all these things on your TV now without the hookups, right? You got the Netflix already on the TV, the Hulu, all of that good stuff. You don't really have a need for the media console. If you still have the VCRs, please get rid of them. Okay? It's time. It's time. So there's nothing you need to hook up to your TV, so you have a lot of space in that media console for stuff because right now you're just throwing junk in there. So instead of having a closed media console, have an open console with ottomans underneath because it will do the same use as we just discussed. It gives you additional seating and it adds that visual interest. Hiding that seating is going to make living in your space that much more practical and you won't feel stressed when it's time to entertain where you feel like you have to stand the entire time or you're not inviting people over because you feel like you can't accommodate them because you definitely can with this home hack. The next home hack is in the bedroom, and this one is super easy, so I'll make it quick. Instead of using a column lamp on your rectangular nightstand, I want you to start using a wide base lamp. Why? Well, column lamps, they just don't take up very much space, right? Because they're a column on this big rectangular piece, right? They're occupying just one little corner of that nightstand, or they're right in smack dab in the middle, and the rest of it feels really empty, right? It looks like kind of like, kind of looks like a buoy in the middle of the ocean, right? It's the vastness and then something very small. We don't want that. So I'm not gonna tell you to overload it with decor because that's costly and that's a lot of um, dusting and you need space for things at nighttime, right? I feel like we never talk about this. People will like overfill their nightstand with stuff and I'm like, okay, but like where does your water bottle go? So instead of using those column lamps, I just want you to start using a wide base table lamps. They're pretty self-explanatory and what they do, they take up more space and most wide base table lamps, they look like vases or jugs or something like that or they look like a sculpture. So they um, create visual interest with their shape and they take up enough space on that nightstand so that if you were to add something else, it would actually look cluttered. When this skill isn't mastered in the bedroom, that's really, really what makes the bedroom look kind of drab and lacking. So this really, really minor tweak can really revolutionize the way the space looks and reinvigorate it, right? Your space, it doesn't have to be overrun with styling. Over styling is a huge, huge issue. So just do something that's larger, that is scaled more appropriately to your nightstand and it will work wonders. The next design hack that is going to make 
designing so much easier for you and less cumbersome is to use Pinterest. And I know a lot of you are probably like, well, I already do that, but a lot of people don't know what Pinterest is. So Pinterest is a website where you can find interior design inspiration. You know, you don't just have to put, you know, um, design ideas into Google, right? Because Google sends too many results, right? It's very overwhelming. Pinterest, on the other hand, you can search for contemporary design, um, Scandinavian design, nightstand styling, coffee table styling, and ideas that really resonate with you will pop up almost instantly. And when you choose a pin that you enjoy, it will recommend other similar pins that you can find tons and tons and tons of inspiration. Not only is Pinterest a great tool for that, but there are lots of people kind of like myself, other designers, other um, stylists, other home decor enthusiasts who put together visuals that really guide you on these basic design principles. For example, I have tons of pins on how to arrange pillows on your sofa, how to set up your bedroom, different styling techniques, how to layer your bed, right? All these little foundational things that are such little minute details that make a huge impact on the space. Now the next home hack is something I talk about all the time. I'm gonna say it again because it's important. You know, that's what they say in school. I want you to start designing in groups of threes. So whenever you're standing a coffee table, a console table, a shelf, your counter, I want you to group things in groups of three because odd numbers really resonate with us. I don't know, there's something about having four vases versus three vases that really, really changes the space. The four vases feels like over kill on three bases that is the sweet spot when you're styling, I not only want you to have a group of three items, but I want you to have three distinct items, right? So I want them to be different, at least in terms of color or texture or height. There needs to be some difference that sets them apart. To make your space look more interesting, to add the detail, you need to have some really small changes that really flow well together. So start doing that. That is also going to make designing so much easier for you because you don't have to guess, oh, like how many things should I have in this vignette? The answer is always three or it is a multiple of three, but just do three. <laughs> three is definitely best. So do the three. The three is going to take you a long way. Just vary in terms of height, color, and texture, and you will be good to go. I promise. If you go through your house and you do that right now, it's going to look so much better instantly. The final decorating hack that is going to totally change the game for you and make decorating your house easier is to put every single piece of furniture on a furniture pad. So if you don't know what a furniture pad is, basically it is a piece of felt with adhesive on one side that sticks to the foot of your furniture. Not only does it stop your furniture from scratching your floor, but it allows you to really easily glide your furniture throughout your home. Just think of it as ice skating with furniture, right? Instead of using one of those like little walkers to learn how to ice skate, you will instead use a piece of furniture. How exciting, a revolutionary. So I want you to start doing this, not only so that you don't scratch your floor, but so that you can actually move furniture about in your space. Something people don't talk about in design, or at least on interior design YouTube, is how often people move around their furniture because in your head you might imagine something someplace but then when you get that piece of furniture in the house it doesn't look right right and you can do all of the modeling in the world sometimes you just simply change your mind and there's nothing wrong with that but you want to be able to repurpose that furniture um, in a different way you want to be able to shift it about and I think something that causes a lot of people a lot of grief is not being able to lift furniture or not being able to move it on your by yourself right because then you have to recruit someone else, you have to like sync with their schedule and it becomes a whole ordeal and it can cause a lot of strife. So to eliminate that, put the furniture pads on. You can push anything with ease and really move around your furniture all of the time. Now I'm not saying move it around all the time. If you find something that looks good, please don't move it all the time. And you, I know I look like a hypocrite because you'll probably notice that the room is oriented a little bit differently in this video. I was feeling spicy yesterday so I did rotate the living room around, but don't be like me. Do as I say, not as I do, right? So you want to be able to really easily switch your home around so that you can decorate it to the very best of your ability. So the furniture paths are going to be an absolute game changer. Plus when you're first moving in, it's just going to really take the edge off when you're trying to get things in because there's nothing worse than having to hike some furniture up five flights of stairs and then through a bunch of different rooms trying to figure out what the best room for that piece of furniture is. Just start doing it. It's really simple. You can get these felt pads on any website at any store and you and your partner and your children and your dog and your fish and your the mice in your walls will thank you for it. 
Okay, you guys, that's it for today's video. Those were nine decorated hats that make decorating your home that much easier. Designing your home shouldn't be a burden. It literally just shouldn't. I don't care what anyone says. And all of these hacks will make, will make it that much easier for you because there's going to be less destruction and there's going to be so much more contentment. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And also follow me on Pinterest if you want tons of those educational infographics. Until next time, have a beautiful day.